The Mutual Broadcasting System, in cooperation with Family Theatre Incorporated, presents Farewell to Bertie McKeesler, starring June Haver. George Murphy is your host. More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. One of our great presidents once said, the real reason for universal unrest is not to be found so much in politics and economics as in the sources of the spiritual life of our times. The sum of the whole matter is this, he said, our civilization cannot survive unless it be redeemed spiritually. The primary hope that we can become less materialistic and more spiritual as men and as nations lies in our turning more to God, all of us. And the first step, it seems to me, is for us to decide that each of our families will henceforth institute the practice of daily family prayer. The family, you know, is the fundamental unit in the world society. And each of its members can be better, can be closer together, and can have more faith in the future if all of us together, daily, call on God to aid the nation and aid the world. It is not only true that a family which prays together stays together, but also a world at prayer is a world at peace. George Murphy will return at the conclusion of tonight's family theater story, Farewell to Bertie McKeesler, starring Miss June Haver. Bertie McKeesler had been daydreaming behind the reception desk at Tyler, Flint, Standish, and O'Rourke for nearly a year when Mr. Tyler made an amazing discovery. It all came about because Mr. Tyler's secretary was at home with a severe case of prickly heat. And so shaken was Mr. Tyler by his discovery that he felt obliged to call an immediate meeting of the partners. Gentlemen. I wonder if you're aware that the firm of Tyler, Flint, Standish and O'Rourke, a firm noted for its thoroughgoing efficiency down to the smallest detail, has in its employ a young woman who can type only 22 and one-half words per minute. No. Incredible. Are you sure? Beyond the shadow of a doubt. I have here on my desk a letter which I gave her to type two hours ago. Two hours, mind you. She just brought it in, and with three erasures. I just can't believe it. It doesn't seem possible. But who is she? The young woman I refer to occupies the reception desk in our outer office. A Miss, uh, Miss, uh, McKeesler. Yes, yes, that's it. Birdie McKeesler. McKeesler? McKeesler? McKeesler. The name means nothing to you? Absolutely nothing. First time I ever heard of it. I once knew a Millicent McKeesler in Wapakoneta, Ohio. Oh, come, come, come now, gentlemen. Certainly one of you knows this Miss McKeesler because one of you must have hired her. Not I. Nor I. Well, O'Rourke? You know me better than that. I wouldn't hire even an Irish lass who could type only 22 and a half words a minute. Hmm. Strange. Tyler? Yes? You don't suppose she could have been planted here as a subversive element? Oh, I hardly think... I know it seems far-fetched. Still, one can't be too careful. And it's just the sort of trick Flavin, Heppelwhite, Pringle and McGrew would pull. Yes. I have it. Why don't we ask the young lady herself? She ought to know who hired her. A splendid idea, Standish. Nothing like going to the sauce. You wanted to see me, Mr. Tyler? That's right, Miss, uh, Miss, uh... uh McKeesler. Uh, McKeesler, yes. Uh, Bertie McKeesler, after my Aunt Bertie on my mother's side. Uh, yes. Uh, now, Miss McKeesler, there are a few questions I should like to ask you. Well, you just go right ahead, Mr. Tyler. I shall be glad to help you out in any way I can. Uh, <clears throat> first of all, Miss McKeesler, how long have you been working here? Well, it'll be a year next month. That's the longest I've ever worked anywhere. I have no doubt of it. Now, uh, do you recall who it was who hired you? Well, uh, nobody hired me. 
in the proper sense of the word. Oh, but surely someone... Well, you see, it all came about because of my girlfriend, Mercedes McNulty. McNulty? McNulty? Then that name sounds familiar. Of course. I hired her myself two years ago. Excellent girl. Average well over a hundred words per minute. And as true a friend as you'd find anywhere. Yes, I'm sure of that. But how do you Well, have... now, just a year ago next month, Mercedes' grandmother died up in Poughkeepsie. And Mercedes asked me if I'd sit in for her while she was gone. She said there was nothing to it. All I would have to do was say, Good morning, Mr. Tyler. Good morning, Mr. Flint. Good morning, Mr. Standish. And good morning, Mr. O'Rourke. Oh, and, and answer the phone a few times. That's simple, eh? Yes, sir. And that's just the way it's been, too. Until this morning, that is. You know, it was a real surprise to me when you handed me that letter to type. Yes, it must have been. Oh, but now don't you apologize, Mr. Tyler. Like I said, I'm just glad to help out. I want you to feel free to call on me any time you like. Uh, thank you. But if you don't mind my asking, just what became of Miss McNulty? Oh, that. Well, it was at the funeral. Oh, and it was a grand funeral, gentlemen. Uh, Mercedes wrote me about it. Flowers uh, all over the place and not a dry eye in the house. Yes, yes, but how do you... Well, now, it was at the funeral that she met this young man. And it was love at first sight, gentlemen. So, after a decent interval, out of respect to her grandmother, rest her soul, they were married. Uh, and you just stayed on? Well, I, I thought it was only right. After all, I, I'd promised Mercedes I'd sit in for her till she came back, hadn't I? Well, yes, but... And uh, I haven't minded it one little bit. Really, I haven't. How have you been paid? Who issued you your checks? Oh, there wasn't any trouble about that. The auditor's assistant gave me a slip to sign, and my little old checks have been coming along just fine ever since. I see. Uh, um, thank you, Miss McKeesley. I think that will be all um, for now. Uh, yes, sir. And... It's been a real pleasure talking to all of you gentlemen. She will, of course, have to be dismissed. Oh, naturally. Oh, of course. I suppose she must. You know, though, Tyler, as a receptionist, she isn't called upon to do much typing. What I mean is, she was here nearly a year before the occasion arose. Ah, but it did arise, didn't it? Well, yes. There you are, then. Oh, drat it all. It's the principle of the thing. Can't you see that? We've spent years building a reputation for a high standard of efficiency among our employees. Miss McKeesler simply doesn't measure up. Yes, I guess you're right at that. Twenty-two words a minute. If wind of that ever got around... Please, let's not even think about it. Well, that's that, then. You'll tell her, I suppose. I? I just thought... Well, you brought the matter up in the first place, and you are the senior partner. I fail to see what that has to do with it. But who is going to tell her? Well, I had thought I'd turn the matter over to whichever one of you hired her. However, now I... Yes, it does pose a problem. I suppose we could flip for it. Now, wait a minute. O'Rourke was the one who hired Miss Pignalty. So indirectly, at least, he's responsible exactly. for... Exactly. But I... Nonsense, you're the logical one, O'Rourke. You may speak to Miss McKeesler in the morning. <laughs> Uh, good morning, Miss McKeesler. Oh, Mr. O'Rourke, you were so quiet I didn't even hear you come in. And you're early, aren't you? Well, the fact is, Bertie, Miss McKeesler, I wondered if I could have a word with you. Why, I can't think of anything I'd enjoy more. Of course, if you're too busy, oh, I... Oh, goodness, no. To tell you the honest truth, there's many a day when I'm hard put to keep myself occupied till it's time to go home. Oh? If you don't mind my saying so, Mr. O'Rourke, you're looking very fit this morning. That's a new tie, isn't it? I, uh, yes, yes it is. <laughs> uh, you like it? Oh, indeed I do. Now there's a color that really does you justice. My wife gave it to me for our anniversary. Did she? Well, you're a lucky man. You know, it's a sign of true love when a wife picks out a tie that looks well on her husband. It is? Hmm, a sure sign. Well, I'll have to tell Margaret that. <laughs> Don't tell me your wife's name is Margaret. Why, yes. Why, that was my own dear mother's name, rest her soul. From County Cork she was. Is that a fact? My father came from Cork. That was a good many years ago, of course. You don't mean it. Oh, yes, indeed. Jamie O'Rourke from County Cork, they used to call him. <laughs> well, there's no denying it's a small world. 
Oh, my goodness, look at the time. Here I've been going on like the chatterbox I am, and I haven't even got this mail sorted. But uh, never mind, Mr. O'Rourke. You can stop by later and tell me what you wanted to say. <laughs> Morning, Standish. Good morning. Morning, rock. Good morning. What's the matter with you? Out on the wrong side of bed? Oh, say, you'd better get the employment agency on the phone first thing about a replacement for Miss McKeesler. Tyler. Yes? I, um, I haven't exactly told Miss McKeesler yet that she's leaving us. What? Fact of the matter is, Tyler, I think this may take a little more time than we had thought. More I... time? What do you mean? What's so difficult about telling an employer that his services are no longer required? It's done every day. I know. And it sounds easy when you say it, but... I'm disappointed in you, O'Rourke. I'm afraid I have no choice but to turn the entire matter over to Standish. Who? Me? Precisely. I'm depending on you to speak to Miss McKeesler in the morning. <laughs> Good morning, Miss McKeesler. Why, good morning, Mr. Standish. How are you today? What? Oh, fine, fine. Uh, just fine. Well, I'm glad to hear that. Miss McKeesler, are you, uh, are you quite happy working for us? Why, Mr. Standish, how thoughtful of you to ask. But don't you ever worry. I wouldn't dream of working anywhere but here. You wouldn't? Why, no, I I'd be an ungrateful fool if I did, after all the kindness you gentlemen have showed me, stopping by to talk to me in the morning the way you do and taking such an interest. I declare I've never seen the likes of it. Yes. Well... Oh, Mr. Standish, something fell out of your pocket. What? Oh, oh dear, I forgot all about that. Young Jackie asked me to mail it. It's some box tops he's sending for an atomic decoding ring or some such thing. You know how boys are. You have a son? I didn't know that. Oh, my, yes. I have three. Well, isn't that grand? You, you wouldn't happen to have a picture of them, would you? Well, as a matter of fact, I do have a couple of snapshots. Oh, would you mind letting me see them? Why, no, not at all. They're right in my wallet here. Uh, now, there... Uh, that one was taken at camp last summer. And this is out in front of our house. Ah, uh, what fine big boys they are. And everyone the spitting image of his father. Well, you think they take after me? Why, I know them anywhere for yours. What? Really? <laughs> Funny thing is, uh, most people think that uh, Ronnie, especially, uh, he's the, the, the one in the middle here, favors his mother's side of the family. Well, of course, I don't know your wife, but there's no mistaking the set of that chin. And about the eyes, that young man is his father all over again. Well, that's interesting. Yeah, indeed, that is interesting. Of course, I don't like to get into any arguments with my in-laws, but the fact is, I have always been of the private opinion. I hope I'm not interrupting anything. Oh, good morning, Mr. Tyler. Good morning, Miss McKeesler. Well, Standish? Uh, I, uh... Well, that is, I was just about to go into my office. Oh, wait a minute, Mr. Standish. Hmm? You forgot your pictures. I wonder if you realize, Standish, the spectacle you were making of yourself when I walked in that door. Snapshots all over the place, and you leaning across Miss McKeesley's desk like a silly, goggle-eyed boy of 16. Was it? Really that bad? Worse. Much worse. And on top of that, Miss McKeesler has still not been informed of her dismissal. Yeah, I know, I know. What I... in the devil is happening to this firm? We've hired and fired hundreds of people since we started in business. And now, faced with this simple, clear-cut task of discharging a highly inefficient young woman, you and O'Rourke... Flint. Yes? Do you think you could face the formidable Miss McKeesler and tell her in plain, unmistakable English that she is fired? Well, I... I don't see why not. All right. I want you to speak to Miss McKeesler in the morning. And this time, I want results. Why, why, Mr. Flint... 
I never did see such gentlemen for getting down to the office at the crack of dawn, so to speak. It's no wonder you've made a success of things. Miss McKeesler, I shall be brief. By all means do, if it pleases you. You understand I speak not for myself alone, but for the entire firm of Tyler, Flint, Standish, and O'Rourke. Oh, my, that must be a dreadfully big responsibility. Uh, yes. Uh, we want you to know, Miss McKeesler, that we, all of us, that is, Tyler, Standish, and O'Rourke, as well as myself, we are not unappreciative of the fact that you have been with us for nearly a year. And although your association with this firm did come about somewhat by accident, we assume that you have served us to the best of your ability. However... Please, Mr. Flint, don't go on. I beg your pardon? Well, if it's a raise you want to give me, I, I can't let you do it. But, Miss McKeesler, I... Uh, that is... Please, you don't understand. Well, now, I understand that you're the dearest, kindest gentleman in all the world, and, and it's exactly because of that that I wouldn't feel right about letting you pay me any more money. I, I get along very nicely on what I make now, and, and I'm making every cent of what I'm worth. Maybe more. Nobody knows that better than I. Well, I, I don't quite know what to say. Well, you just thank the rest of the gentlemen for their kind thoughts, but you tell them I, I couldn't accept a raise. Well, that will certainly come as a great surprise to them. Well, now, I'm sure they'll see my way of it if you'll just explain. Uh, Mr. Flint, would you turn this way a bit? What? Hmm? There, just what I thought. The bottom button of your coat is hanging on by only a thread. Oh, so it is. I, I hadn't noticed. And you'll lose it sure before the day's out if it isn't fixed. Yes, well, I'll have to stop by the tailor's. Why, but... you'll do no such thing. I have a needle and thread right here in my purse. Now, that isn't necessary, Mrs. McKeesler. Really... Oh, uh... I can have it fixed in less time than it takes to argue about it. Now, you stand a little closer here, will you, please? Well, all right. There, that's fine. <laughs> I, I guess this is what comes of being a bachelor, eh? You? A bachelor? Well, now, that's, that's hard to believe, Seems to me that some nice woman would have set her cap long ago for a fine-looking man like you. Well, I... I was engaged at one time. Her name was Caroline. But she decided in favor of someone else. No. Why, the lady must have lost hold of her senses. Oh, she seemed very sure of herself. Of course, he was rather a dashing chap. A furniture salesman. Hmm, a poor choice, if you ask me. And I'll bet she regrets it to this day. Well, I don't know about that. Hmm, there. There you are. Oh, that button won't be coming loose for a long time. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, it was no trouble at all. You know, <laughs> it's, it's odd that the subject of Caroline came up. It just happens, you see, that she was left a widow three years ago. And it has occurred to me recently that, well, it might not be out of order for me to call on her at any rate. Hmm. Well, I don't think you should have a doubt in the world. Yes, after all, we were friends at one time, as I said. And we're both older and wiser now, so I dare say we could let bygones be bygones. Why, of course you could. You know, it's a crying shame to let the poor dear lady sit there all alone. No, she's not exactly alone. She has three children. Oh, but it's not the same. It's not the same thing at all, and you know very well it isn't. You... you think I should get in touch with her then? Why, it, it's the only decent, friendly thing to do. You're right. By George, you're right. I'm going out and call her this very moment. Why, why, who knows? I might even have lunch with her. Miss Johnson, hasn't Flint come in yet? No, Mr. Tyler. Have you tried to reach him again? We've been calling his home all afternoon, sir, but there's no answer. The coward. What time is it, Miss Johnson? Uh, a quarter of five, Mr. Tyler. Is Miss McKeesler still at her desk? Yes, sir. She doesn't leave until five, sir. Very well. Send her into my office. I'll settle this thing once and for all. It was so sweet of you to drive me home, Mr. Tyler. Ah, <laughs> Not at all. I often think it's easier to discuss such matters away from the, uh, the hurly-burly of the office. Oh, it is, I'm sure. Um, Miss McKeesler, uh, I have always been of the opinion that when something had to be said, it was better to come right out and say it and not beat around the bush. You must have looked into my mind, Mr. Tyler. I was thinking that very thing myself. You were? Yes, sir, and you're right. I can't put it off any longer. 
Oh, I've I've been trying to tell you or, or one of the other gentlemen for over a week now, but you've all been so good to me, heaping kindness upon kindness. I, I just couldn't find the heart to do it. I, I'm afraid I don't quite follow you. Well, like you said, Mr. Tyler, no good can come of beating around the bush. So I'll come right out with it. The bare fact of the matter is, I'll have to be leaving you soon. What? I I hope you won't think too harshly of me. It isn't that I'm ungrateful or dissatisfied. It's just that Tim... He's my young man. Well, Tim has been after me to marry him now for three months, and and I finally set the date for a week from next Thursday. I just can't believe it. I know, sir. I was afraid you'd take it pretty hard. But but don't you worry now. I, I'm sure things will all work out for the best. Gentlemen, I've called you together this morning to discuss a problem which has been very much on our minds these last few days. Perhaps you are aware of the matter to which I refer. Uh, uh, Yes, quite. I am fully aware that each of us in turn undertook a task which should have held no qualms, the simple task of discharging an inefficient receptionist. But Tyler... I feel Mr. McKeeson... demonstrated... Just a moment, gentlemen, please. Each of you has told me of your uh, encounters with Miss McKeesler, and each of you failed to carry through with the job at hand. Why? Well, Tyler, after chatting with the young lady briefly, I came to the conclusion that perhaps we were misjudging the girl. She seemed to possess certain uh, qualities that I felt we had been overlooking. Right, Standish. In spite of the fact that Miss McKeesler can type only 22 and one-half words per minute, she would seem to have other attributes to minimize her lack of ability at the typewriter. After all, she... After all, gentlemen, for almost a year she has been the the, the front for the firm of Tyler uh, Flint Standish and O'Rourke. She is the first to greet any new client who sets foot in our offices, and from my experiences with her, I believe Bertie to be a girl who creates a very favorable first impression, and that's important. Gentlemen, I find your statements most interesting. I, too, have great admiration for Miss McKeesler. This incident may well serve as a good example to us, a firm that has for years prided itself on efficiency and good management, and now, right in our midst, we find an employee unknown by name to any one of us until a few days ago. A girl who might, for all we know, have had severe personal problems, which the firm might have been able to do something about. I think Miss McKeesler has done us all a favor. I might even go so far as to say, taught us a lesson. Gentlemen, I believe we should institute a new policy with regard to our employee relationship. Agreed? Excellent. Agreed, agreed, agreed. Uh, But just one question, Tyler. Didn't you undertake to personally discharge Miss McKeesler? After all. Twenty-two and a half words per minute. Uh, <clears throat> gentlemen, you may be interested to know that after this week, Miss McKeesler will no longer be with us. Uh, mm-hmm. You told oh, her? Uh, if you, if you don't mind my asking, Tyler, just how did you finally break it to her? Firmness of purpose, my boy. Keep your goal in sight and let nothing stop you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm afraid I must admit that my task was made somewhat easier by the fact that Miss McKeesler is planning to be married shortly. Well, what do you know? Oh, isn't that nice? I hope he's good enough for her. Uh, yes. Well, that brings me to my reason for calling this meeting. In view of the fact that Miss McKeesler will have been with us for nearly a year, I thought perhaps it would be appropriate for us to present her with a parting gift. Sort of a nest egg, so to speak. By all means. Oh, quiet. Count me in. Very well, then. That's agreed. Now, as to the amount, it occurred to me that a suitable sum might be, uh, $500? $500? Oh, wait till Tim hears about this. Why, he'll want to come up and shake the hand of every one of you. Well, we just hope you'll be very, very happy. Indeed, we do. We all wish you the best. That goes for me and Caroline, too. Oh, oh you're so good to me. I, I think I'm going to cry. No, oh, no, none of that dear. now. Here, uh, here's my handkerchief. Thank you. Well, well, anyhow, gentlemen, you'll all be glad to know your kindness isn't going to go unrewarded. I've got a piece of good news for you that I've been saving till the last. Well, out with it. By all means. Yes, let's hear it. Well, I talked to my sister Peggy last week, and it's all settled. She's agreed to take my place with you after I've left. 
Didn't you gentlemen hear what I said? Uh, yes, yes, yes. I guess we were all a little overwhelmed. Your, uh, sister, you say? That's right, my sister Peggy. Oh, she hasn't quite my knack for typing and such office matters as that, but she's sweet and honest, and I know you're going to love her. Really, Miss McKistley, you shouldn't have... Oh, now, that's all right, Mr. Tyler, and, and don't you bother thanking me. After all, I felt it was the least I could do. This is George Murphy again. The story of Bertie McKeesler is a charming light comedy. It furnishes an entertaining half hour and some very amusing highlights of human nature. But the story carries a very important point, one that I think bears repeating. Now, maybe Bertie wasn't the most able stenographer who ever took a letter, but she did have one great faculty, the ability to understand the problems of other people. She was able to put herself in the other fellow's place. The more each of us can do that, the fewer misunderstandings will arise, the less friction. We need understanding these days, especially between individuals, within families, between groups and classes, and most of all, between nations. One of the great commandments is, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. To aid us in this endeavor, we should, as families, call on God together. We should do that daily, so that we will be constantly reminded of our obligations. Remember, a world at prayer is a world at peace. Before saying goodnight, I'd like to thank June Haver for her performance this evening, and our thanks to Jane Speed for writing tonight's play, and to Max Tear for his music. This production of Family Theater Incorporated was directed by David Young. Others who appeared in tonight's play were Alan Reed as Tyler, Charles Maxwell as Flint, Leo Cleary as O'Rourke, Herb Butterfield as Standish, and Joe Graham as Miss Johnson. Next week, our Family Theater stars will be Gene Hersholt and Scotty Beckett in the story of John Sager. Your hostess will be Dinah Shore. This is George Murphy saying good night and God bless you. This series of the Family Theater broadcasts is made possible by the thousands of you who felt the need for this kind of program and by the mutual broadcasting system which has responded to this need. Be with us next week at this same time when our Family Theater stars will be Gene Herschel and Scotty Beckett with Dinah Shore as hostess. Tony Lafrano speaking. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.